Amen, amen. That's all y'all got? That's all y'all got this morning? Anybody glad to be in the house of God this morning? Huh? Do me a favor, put your hands in front of your face and blow your breath. Did y'all feel that? Did y'all feel that? You got breath in your body. So that's why you should be thanking God and giving him praise right now. Because it's somebody that didn't wake up this morning. It's somebody who, who been going through a bunch of stuff all week long. And didn't understand where the help come from. And you come in here this morning looking for something. At least I hope you did. I come this morning looking for something. I need God to do something in my life. I, I need God to do something in my house. I need, I need God to do something in my family. I, I need God to do something on my job. And so I'm here just to give God praise and to say thank you Jesus and to raise my hand and to kick my feet a little bit because of how good God is to me. He's good like that. He's better than good. And the beautiful thing is he can do it all by himself. He don't need no help. He don't have to phone a friend. He ain't going to tell all your business. He ain't going to hate on you. He ain't going to act one way in, when he's in your face and a different way when he's behind your back. One thing I found out is God is consistent. He's consistently good. You right in. He's good. Good morning. Good morning, family and friends. I'm so glad to stand before you. Uh, we are going to go up a little bit higher. Uh, and I really do pray to God that you came here expecting something, that you want God to do something. Uh, I can't wait to hear what God's word that he has placed on Dr. Tanika Tate. Amen. I can't wait to hear it. Amen. Amen. We're going to go a little bit farther. We're going to have devotion. Uh, for my deacons, uh, come on up. Amen. Let's pray with them. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. It's so good to be here this morning in the presence of the Lord. And whenever I get a chance, I don't have to be in church. I find myself saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you brought me a long, long way. You brought me out of sickness, Lord. 
you strengthen my body where I could be here today. And I just say thank you. I'm here to read the scripture this morning. And the one that came to me that I was made, well, I don't say made to dwell on, that I dwelled on is the 91st Psalm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Yes, Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give the angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt dwell, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Did y'all hear that? He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord, I stand here in your presence. And Lord, I'm asking, Lord, a blessing upon your people. Oh, God, lead us through your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that you woke us up this morning and put on our spirits to come out and praise your name. Lord, you've been so wonderful and still going to be wonderful. Oh, God, just keep us going in thy holy name. Bless all the families here. Bless the families that couldn't even make it. Bless the one that's going to pray, bring the word to us this morning. Oh, in Jesus' holy name, we thank you. Bless the almighty God that she can bring up the old and the new, Lord, and she can strengthen our spirits. We just say thank you because you gave us another chance to be here in your house. In your house. In your house to praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. We're thanking God for what he's doing. Amen. I was talking to Brother Max Berry uh, not too long ago. And, uh, we was talking about how no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I don't think people really understand uh, uh, what that means. Uh, no weapons form against you shall prosper. Go ahead, preach out. And, and we're not just talking about guns and knives, but uh, but the devil will be working in, in, in some different ways. Uh, and he uses different people and and, and, and different things. And so uh, I'm just here to remind you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Uh, I, I, I say that because I, I know I ain't the only one in here dealing with things and going through stuff, but uh, you know, I, I just got blessed uh, uh, with a promotion on my job. And, uh, um, and and uh, I get to serve this position, the first person to ever serve this position, uh, first black person to ever serve this position too, uh, uh, for our great city. And, and I'm thankful because I went through a whole lot of stuff just to get there. I, I endured a whole lot of nights and days of crazy stuff just to get into that position. And I'm just here to remind somebody that no matter what you're going through and no matter what you're dealing with, and no matter how much you feel that you are defeated, that, God, that they can't stop, the devil can't stop what God has planned for you. That no, how, no matter how many doors seem to be closed in your face, it's nothing that God cannot do in your life. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And no matter what the diagnosis is, that God... It's got you. He, he got you. He's going to take care of you. He's going to see you through. He's going to make a way out of no way. No matter what the diagnosis is, no matter what the doctor said, he's going to do it. So the doctor may say it's cancer, but God says something different. The devil may say that you are not qualified for the promotion, but God says something different. They may say your kids ain't going to be nothing. They ain't going to make it. But God says something different. He's good like that. He's good like that. Uh, welcome to St. James Missionary Baptist Church, uh, where we are under the great leadership of Reverend Walton, uh, our interim pastor. Amen. And give a hand for our first lady, uh, Miss Rebecca Walton. Amen. It's my understanding she just had a birthday. Amen. Getting getting younger by the minute. Amen. Amen. I don't know how I don't know how Reverend Walton got blessed like that, but you know God is good. It wasn't him. It was all God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Uh, do we have any visitors in the house? Please stand real quick. Please stand on your feet if you are, you're a guest to St. James. You're a guest to St. James. Please stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are so excited to have you guys. Uh, we thank you for joining us. Uh, and the unfortunate thing about being here at St. James, you can't be a guest too long. Uh, you already family. And so we want to welcome you. You can do whatever you see fit to do. That means shout, uh, uh, kick your shoes off, rip and run around here. Uh, please feel free to do that. We believe in sweating through your suit, throwing your wig off, uh, all that good stuff. So please, 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 please do that. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. It's offering time. Amen. It's, it's time to give. Uh, this is another form of worship. 
Um, and so uh, at St. James, we're blessed. Uh, God has blessed us to, to be doing a lot of different things. Amen. And so you pouring and being good stewards of what God has given you and pouring into this ministry, you are pouring into good grounds. And we are, we are um, making sure that we are pouring into other people. We are pouring into other people, pouring into our communities. And so we thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, we are in uh, the process of, uh, we are in our capital campaign, uh, paying off our mortgage, amen? Uh, so we can do more things, amen? And so God has been doing uh, great things through that. We are doing great things. Uh, we are moving forward uh, because of your faithfulness, amen, and pouring into this ministry. And so we thank you for that. It's ways, different ways to give. You can give through Givelify, uh, PayPal. We take good checks, uh, good checks, good checks, uh, amen. We take good checks uh, and, and we take cash, amen. 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 So uh, feel free to do that. And, and sometimes y'all like me, you get paid uh, on the 1st and the 15th. So uh, today may not be the day you got paid. Feel free to drop by uh, our administrative assistant, Sister Fanny. We would love to take your offering. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet right quick and help me read the affirmation uh, and read it with all your heart. Read it loud. Say it with your chest. Amen. Uh, amen. Affirmation of giving. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Therefore, I give my tithes and all without hesitation. And so by faith, I declare that I am a lender and not a borrower. I am the head and not the tail. According to Malachi 3 and 10, the floodgates of heaven are open, and I am living in the abundance of the overflow. Amen. Amen. Uh, God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for your grace and mercy. God, we thank you for everybody who is going to give. And God, we thank you for everybody who don't have it to give. God, we ask you to bless their finances, increase their territory, God. And God, let this seed be planted into good grounds and that we use it for the uplifting of your kingdom. God, we say thank you again. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are in the hands of our greeters. Over my life, yeah. Over my 
say favor, favor, have favor, favor, and it's over my life, yeah, over my say life, favor. And it's all my life, yeah. Oh, Take it up, say favor. Don't you want a little baby? baby. It's better than money. Baby. It's better than fame. Baby. It's better than fortune. Baby. It's like a brand name. Baby. I need a little baby. baby. I need a little baby. baby. Don't you need a little baby? baby? Don't you need a little baby? baby. And it's Ooh. over my life, yeah. Baby. JJ? Amen. She said, you need a little favor. I was like, that's me right there. She hit that, ooh. I said, okay, JJ. Amen. Favor. Anybody need a little favor from God? Ain't nothing wrong with favor from God. I operate in that. Amen. If it wasn't for God's favor, if it wasn't for his grace, if it wasn't for his mercy, uh, I don't know where your boy will be. I operate in that. <laughs> Good God Almighty. And I know a perfect person who has favor on her life. She has favor on her life. She operates in that too. And she's a beautiful soul. She's an amazing person. Uh, she's the, one of the hardest working women I know. She's an amazing, amazing person. And that is Dr. Tanika Tate. Uh, Dr. Tanika Tate has uh, just been promoted to uh, Assistant Director of Special Education. That's big, y'all. That's big. And I don't know if y'all paying attention to what's going on in enforcement public schools, but some things, some great things are happening. And I'm glad that Dr. Tanika Take is a part of that. Um, she's a blessed woman, a mighty woman of God. And you can tell how blessed she is because of her family. Amen. She has some wonderful, beautiful kids, an amazing husband. And so that shows you how great of a woman she is. And for, able, for her to be able to hold it down at home and to hold it down in her career and to hold it down behind the pulpit. 
speaks volumes for her. And so we thank God for blessing us and allowing her to come and break bread with us and give us what God has placed on her heart. So I want you guys real quick to repeat after me, Dr. Tanika Tate, preach the word. Dr. Tanika Tate, preach God's word. Amen. After one more song, Dr. Tanika Tate is coming and she's going to bless this house and bless your soul. And you're going to be able to fight this week like you have never been able to fight before. Amen. Come on.
just want you to think for just a second. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, I heard somebody say earlier, where would I be? And then I heard somebody else say, I don't even want to think about where I would be. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I can't help but shout and bless the name of the Lord. And if that's how you feel today, I want you to get up off of your feet. And what I want you to do is begin to call out the name above all other names. And that's the name of Jesus. I want the music to go down just a little bit. And I want to hear the instrument of your voice. I want to hear the instrument of your hands that can bless the Lord. The Bible says that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. See, they fixed it to where we've just been together for about 20 minutes. So we've got about 10 more minutes because it don't take God long. So in the next 10 minutes, I want you to give God your highest praise. In the next 10 minutes, I just want you to tell God how good he is, how faithful he is, how amazing that he is, how gracious that he is. Because he's such a good, good God. He's such a good, good God. He's such a good, good God. I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. I want you to continue to bless the Lord with your mouth. I want you to continue to bless the Lord with your hands. I want you to continue to bless the Lord with your feet. For he is worthy. He's worthy, worthy, worthy. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. His name, his name, his name. Something about that name, Jesus. His name, his name. He's grateful. He's so worthy. Go ahead and give God your biggest hallelujah. Don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. I want us to open our minds, prepare our hearts. Worship is a great way to do that. Worship is not about the worship team performing. Worship is really about me saying, and giving God glory and honor for all that he is in my life. And if he means something to you, don't quit on God this morning. Let's continue to bless the name of the Lord. I will bless the name of the Lord. He is worthy of all my praise. He is worthy of all my money. He is worthy of everything that I have. He's worthy of my talent and my resources. He's worthy of my praise. And we give God the highest, the highest praise of hallelujah. Lord, we honor you today for you are so worthy. We thank you, Jesus, for being God. We bless your rich and holy name. If all of God's people would say amen. Before you take your seats, I want you to high five somebody. And I want you to tell them God is so good. And then I want you to tell them why he's good. See, sometimes we get a little cliche and we get a little churchy and we want to say God is so good. But I want you to tell somebody why God is so good to you. He's so good to me because he woke me up this morning. He's so good to me because I had a choice in what I would put on this morning. He's so good to me because I could clap my hands. I don't know about you, but even if you needed glasses, you could see somewhat with those eyes this morning. He gave you the use of your legs this morning. I think we ought to tell somebody that God is so good and he is grateful to be praised.
Now, once you've given him a high five and you've told him how good he is and you've told him why he's good, I'd like for you to take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hey, guys, will you bring me down just a little bit? Bring me down just a little bit. Amen. Good morning, St. James. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's so good to be home. St. James is where I started. See, you can't forget where you come from. It wasn't here, but it was at the old church where I learned my first Bible verse, right? It was here that I learned the lessons on assurance that I still use every single day. Amen? Amen. Don't forget where you've come from. The Bible says don't despise small beginnings. And even then I didn't think it was small because I didn't think I could even live up to what it was that he was asking us to do. Amen? Amen. But the goodness of Jesus has continued to carry me over these last few years, and I get an opportunity to come and break bread with my brothers and my sisters this morning. It's such an opportunity to be before you, and I'm ever humble for Dr. Hinkle and the committee for, um, and, and, and Reverend Walton for asking me to come and, 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 and just talk for a few minutes. Amen? Amen. Um, um, God has called me to serve. He's Minister just simply means to serve. And today I get to serve with my voice. And for those of you that knew me for a long time, you've know, probably known for a long time that the Lord called me to preach because I've talked all my life, right? Right, Jojo? I have, I have. He, she, they probably knew way back then that that's what God had called me to do. And, and so I, I thank God for the opportunity to be here with you. I thank God for um, my husband, Troy, and my girls. I see my mother in love in the house. Um, I'm thankful for my girls, and there's my tea baby. And y'all, I got some other family that came this morning, too. I thank God for the Smith sitting over there on, the, on that side. Amen. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so humbled that you would come and hear what the Lord has to say to the church this morning. Um, I also want to thank God for Pastor Flake. Um, y'all, I got to tell y'all, I kind of made a mistake. Um, Shawnee Boy had asked me probably a month ago to, to come today, and with everything that has been going on, I, I kind of forgot to tell my pastor. Um, <laughs> so yesterday, we're together, and I don't even remember to tell him in the four hours that we're together. And so last night, I'm praying and kind of prepping, and, and my heart is pricked that I didn't. And so I sent him a text, and I asked for him to forgive me, and I kind of tell him because I need his blessing to be able to be here this morning. I, I, I want you to know something. Um, your gifts are not your own. They belong to God. And then after they belong to God, you submit them to the local church. I don't know who I'm talking to, but that's biblical. Amen? Amen. And so um, um, when, I, when I texted him last night, he, he didn't text me back. And so I got a little bit nervous. I was like, oh, man, did I? Because I haven't really. I, I, anyway, so this morning I, I called him. And so he immediately when I pick up, he, when he picks up, he starts to tell me about a different story. And I said, Pastor, I didn't call you for that. He said, you didn't? I said, no, sir. I said, I, I called you because, and then I, t I went ahead and told him. And when I told him, he said, um, <laughs> I just want you to do what God called you to do. And so I thank God for Pastor Flake for um, allowing me to be able to be here this morning with you. And there is a word um, from the Lord. I see my tribe out there, too. I didn't forget about y'all. It makes me so happy when I can travel with my tribe that I know that has prayed for me and Lisa and Lynette, I'm just going to ask you in advance to get ready because there's a quick teaching and there's a lot of prayer. And so I want you to be ready um, because there is a word from the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's get to it. I need to just tell y'all one other story. Um, I went to my job this morning to print because I couldn't print at home. So then I go to work to print. And when I go to work to print, um, the electric goes off. <laughs> Now, I know it's 2022, and I probably should be able to do this electronically, but I want y'all to know I still like paper. I still like to write. I still like to, and so I, I was a little bit nervous, but then I said, I'm just going to put my laptop up there. Now, I know this word is in my heart, but if I go here and, I, and, and I'm locked out, I want you to give me just a second. I want you to be patient with me, right, because I want to be able to get back in here and make sure that I'm telling you exactly what it is that I'm supposed to tell you if I get carried away, because it's very obvious I can get carried away in the glory of the Lord really fast, right? But there is a few things that I must tell you today. So if, you, if I hesitate for just a second, it's just because I, I couldn't get printed out this morning, but um, it is in that, in that Microsoft Word. Um, let us pray. Father, I love you. 
I love you more than anything. God, I just ask now in the name of Jesus that with boldness and with clarity, I speak the words that you have for this body today. I surrender everything that I am so that you would be high and lifted up and that every single thing that you intended to happen on this day would happen. I ask that you would open hearts and minds that they might be able to receive the word that you have for today. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Brother Carthorne, thank you so much for that amazing um, welcome this morning. I, I love all those titles that he, that he reminded me that I, that I hold. But the one that I hold most dear is daughter. I get to be a daughter to the Most High every single day. And that's really what my word is about today, is to remind us that we are sons and daughters of the Most High. Sons and daughters of the Most High. If you would, for just a second, go to the book of Psalms. We're going to go to the 34th chapter. That whole chapter is real, real good. But for the sake of today, we're going to go with specifically with verse 3, but I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. If you're able, I'm going to ask you to stand for the reading of God's word. The King James says this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse 3 is where we're going to really work today, and it says this. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Amen. May the Lord ultimately press that word deep down in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Verse 3 says, O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Now, I want to read this to you in the Passion Translation, too. And it says this, Lord, I'm bursting with joy over what you've done for me. My lips are full of perpetual praise. I'm boasting of you and all your works, so let all who are discouraged take heart. Join me, everyone, Let's praise the Lord together. Let's make him famous. Let's make his name glorious to all. I've got about three questions for you today. And our, my first question for you is this. Does your thoughts, your words, and your actions lend themselves to making God and Jesus Christ famous? Does your thoughts, your words, and your actions lend itself to making God and Jesus Christ famous? Now, I've been in church for a long time, and so I know how church folks do, right? I'm one. And my kids are famous for reminding me about church. Y'all, they could be comedians for church, right? And, and, and what I love about this, though, is, is that we've got this certain way in church that we say, God is good. I'm blessed and highly favored. 
but yet we're so discouraged in our hearts. Yet we have no joy. Yet we're so mean that folks can't even talk to us. They don't even know that, that, that we love the Lord. So again, I'm going to ask you, does your thoughts, your words, your actions, see, I'm at home, so I feel pretty comfortable. And not only that, this is the word of the Lord. And so what my assignment is today is to, for us to stop faking. It's time for us to stop faking it till we make it. And instead, we need to be faithing it until we make it. Yeah, things aren't that great. But I still love the Lord. I don't have the job that I want. But I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. See, it's not enough for us to just keep gathering Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and acting like we love the Lord so much. And then Sunday at 12 o'clock until the next Sunday at 10 o'clock, we don't live like we love him. There's a standard to loving our God. There's a standard to loving our God, does your thoughts, your actions, your words, I got to tell you something. There's hope. There's hope. It's called repentance. It's called repentance. I'm not sure why we don't talk about that in the church anymore. I'm not really sure why every message seems to just be so feel good. Because I got to tell you a secret, God is not that concerned about your feelings. What he's really concerned about is your heart. What he's really concerned about is you being in your right mind so that you can make disciples. That's what he's really, really concerned about. And in 2022, at a time where people are so hopeless, the church has such a good time right now to be able to be the church, but yet we find ourselves very silent. And not only are we silent, but we got the audacity to be acting like the people that are hopeless when we should be hopeful. Hopeful. It's time for us to mature and to grow up and quit complaining and acting like God ain't God. God is God. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills. God is still God. Whether I have a job or not, he's God. Whether I have a cancer diagnosis or not, God forbid, he's still God. Family, it's time for us to be reminded that we've got a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Where my glorify is at? Where my glorify is at? I don't want y'all to be mad at me. I don't want y'all to leave and say, Dr. Tate, me. No, I'm not me. But there's a standard to loving our great God. Because here's the deal. When you love somebody, you'll change for them. When you love somebody, you'll compromise for them. I love Troy Tate. I could only stay with him for 24 years if both of us would change. But I got to tell you something. God doesn't change. But what happens is he gets bigger in our lives. He, he, he changes in our lives the more that we change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But we begin to see him differently when we begin to love him differently. We see him differently when we begin to see him differently. When we begin to see him as our king. He's not your equal. He's not your equal. We don't get to compromise on our heavenly father. He has assigned you. And whether that be at the school in second grade, or whether that be at the schoolhouse as a principal, whether that be at the schoolhouse as a teacher, whether you're at DHS, he has called you in the marketplace to make him famous, to make him famous. I got to read you a couple of definitions. To magnify means to praise highly to glorify, or to extol, specifically to praise or render honor to God. Now, 
the Lord has blessed me to get a couple of degrees. And when I think naturally about magnify, it usually means to make bigger than, right? Um, we have magnifying glasses. Um, um, we have the magnifiers. And when we put something under there, it usually it makes it bigger, right? So as I was studying and preparing for this, one of the nuggets that the Lord dropped in my spirit, because I have to tell you something, I don't just get to teach you a word. The Lord teaches me first. And after he teaches me, then I get to come and bring it. And one of the things that he taught me through this was that he doesn't need to be made bigger than. There is no competition. There's no competition. So when we magnify him, close your mouth, sister. So when we magnify him, it simply means to praise highly, to glorify, or to extol. There's another definition that I need to give you, and it's this. It's Lord. Lord is a person having power and authority over others. So here's my second question. My second question is this. Who or what is your Lord? What has power or authority over you? Sometimes work gets, becomes my Lord. And before I know it, I'm working 10, 12, 14 hours a day, and I'm not giving God and my family the balance, the love that they need. So it becomes my Lord. I'm just confessing to you because I need you to know that I'm aware. I'm not preaching at you. We're learning together. Amen? Amen? What's your Lord? What's your Lord? Is it your clothes? Is it your boyfriend, your girlfriend? Sometimes it's even your spouse. And ladies, don't confuse that uppercase L with that lowercase one. That's a whole nother lesson for a different day. But what is having power or authority over you? It gets to puppeteer you. It gets to tell you what to do. One of those things seems to be that little 13-inch uh, uh, iPhone. Y'all, if we took care of Jesus like we took care of our phone, I left my phone at home the other day, and I had the jitters. <laughs> and I didn't have time to go back and get it. I love the Lord. I have no choice. <laughs> he makes me tell the truth even when I don't want to. <laughs> I had the jitters. But sometimes when I leave the house and I don't have time to spend time with him in the morning like that, I don't have those same jitters. Who, 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 who else? And it's okay. Don't raise your hand. Just say, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. There's another definition that I need you to, to know. The next definition is exalt. So we've gone through magnify, which means to praise highly, to glorify, to extol. You need to remember that there is no competition, so you don't need to make him bigger than. He's already that. We just have to acknowledge him as that. Amen? Amen. And then, Lord, it's the person or thing that has power or authority over you. But my hope, my prayer today is that you denounce every other Lord and you begin to sing and say, just like the choir sang so graciously earlier, forever the Trinity becomes your king. Forever, my God, my Savior, and the Holy Spirit becomes my king. Then there's another word that's in there, and it's exalt. And to exalt means to raise in rank, power, or character. Now, y'all, that's a choice because David said this at the end of that. He said, and let us exalt his name together. So we get a choice right there. You don't have to, but I want to strongly encourage you that you should, that we should allow his name to rise in rank to rise in power, and to rise in character, to include our character in him. It says, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us 
exalt his name together. Your first question was, does our thoughts, words, and actions lend themselves to making God and Jesus Christ famous? And that's a personal question. And that's the thing I love about our God is he's a personal, saving, loving God. He walks with me and he talks with me is what the older people would say, right? Y'all, I know what that really means right now. Because sometimes when I want to go off on somebody, he's got to walk with me and talk with me. Sometimes when I really want to do this instead of doing that, he has to walk and talk with me. And then I love the next part of that because it says that he tells me that I am his own. See, I recall a time when, when Tierra was at, at Northside, and, 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 and she, she's acting up at that schoolhouse, and, and a parent comes to her and says, I'm about to call your mom. And so Tierra says, I'll be gone by the time she gets here. Because she's my own, and she knows the expectation of how she should be. Are you acting like that he tells you that you're his own. It's a time of reflection. You're not your own. Your life belongs to him. He's so gracious and merciful that sometimes he lets us think that our life is our own. I wouldn't have never stood here on my own because even though I talked all the time, I wanted to talk when I wanted to talk and I wanted to say what I wanted to say. And up here, you don't get to do that. And down there, you don't get to do that either. Because when you begin to mature in him, you want to make him proud. So let me tell you the rest of that story about Tierra now. Now I don't have to worry about that because not only is she, she this is her saying right here, I'm not going to embarrass you myself, so I'm sure not going to embarrass you. So let me know how many of you are willing to walk that out with Christ like that? How many of you are willing to say, I'm not going to embarrass myself, so I'm certainly not going to embarrass my heavenly father? And we want to. Because honestly, if I can give you a piece of my mind, I feel better, right? If I can tell you what I really want, it makes me feel a certain way. And I don't really care about how you feel, but God. So there's a thing to this magnifying the Lord with me. It's not just on Sunday mornings when we get to come in here and get together. As a matter of fact, what this is on Sunday morning is just simply your refuel. You should be getting your fuel all week long. And your fuel might look really different. Some days it might be a devotion or a scripture or two. But guys, I got to tell you something. Can I just sit? I'm going to sit down here right here with you for a second. You know why our devotions have become so boring to us? They've become so boring to us. Because it's just compliance. It's not commitment. See, those two things look different. When I realize that I get to speak the Word of God, but in order to speak the Word of God, I must know the Word of God. And the only way for me to know the Word of God is to know the one that wrote the Word, right? Because I want you to know that it's in John that he became the Word, right? So he knows the Word. And when I begin to know him, I begin to know the Word, and so does my brothers and sisters in Christ. So if you're being challenged in your devotion time right now, it's because you're checking it off. You want to be able to, in your little mind and in your little heart, say, well, I did that this morning. Y'all, I did that. But what did it matter? Did your heart change? Was your mind renewed and transformed? That's what the Word does every single day. Y'all, my job here is to remind you today that you are a son and a daughter of the Most High, and that we get to bless His name, but there is a way in which we do that. There's a way. There's a standard to holiness. I'm going to get on the soapbox for a minute, and I'm going to jump right off. I saw it on, on, on um, Instagram the other day, and it said this. It was a father talking to a daughter, and he took her cell phone case, and he said, let me have that. 
And she said, no, I need this case. My, my phone might break. And he said, well, why do you need this? Why do you need that case? You, you have the phone. You have it in your hand. And she said, because it's expensive. She said, and, and I've got to, um, I, I, I needed to protect my case, my phone. So the dad said this. He said, that's how I feel about you. So when you're not protected, when you don't have the right clothes on, when you're showing the wrong stuff to the wrong people, that's how I feel. So here's my only, my only soapbox. Ladies, we got to cover up. We wonder why men uh, are looking at you. You wonder why you, you, you feel like people are lusting. We got to cover up. There's a standard to holiness. And I'm okay if you're, and it doesn't matter to me if you're 7 or 70. You need to cover up. There are some things that just should not be shown in public. And I'm totally okay if you get mad. I want you to be mad enough to pray about me. Because as you're praying for me, I pray that God changes your heart as I pray for you. And that he lets you know that you are beautiful and you need to cover up. You're so expensive that you need a case. And that case is your clothes. Because what needs to happen is that they need to fall in love with you and not the thing that you show. And then you wonder why. There's no conversation. You wonder why there's no growth and no maturity. And men, you're not off the hook. You're not off the hook. There's a standard to holiness. And my job in this season is to remind everywhere I go, the Lord has had me say that. There's a standard. And it's okay to be cute, and it's okay to be trendy. But you can't be naked. Adam and Eve, when they were naked, they were wrong. And they, come on, they were ashamed. And then they covered up. And then the Lord asked, he asked them why they did it. Because they were the ones that were supposed to be naked. Y'all, we're not in the garden anymore. This don't, Fort Smith, Arkansas don't even resemble a garden anymore. I need for you to understand that you're not even on a playground. Instead, you are on a war field. This is war. And God is calling his soldiers to the front line. But there's a standard. You would judge me. As a matter of fact, somebody did. I had some holes in my jeans. I wasn't showing very much. I mean, you could see a little bit of thigh right here, maybe right down here. That was it. And somebody even said to me, don't you love Jesus? I said, I do. But if I had on a dress that was right here, it would be no different. But I was so convicted <laughs> that I ain't wore those again. Because this is what the Bible says about it. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. If it causes your brother or your sister to fall, then you got to do something different. Them jeans is super cute. But they're going to have to stay in that closet until I either lose a little bit of weight or I can close them up, right? It's okay if y'all laugh with me. It's all right. It's all right. This is all in love, I promise. All right, let's go on. I got to tell you a few other things, and then we're going to do what God called us to do. All right. In the book of Mark, it's okay if you don't go there. I'm going to read it to you all. Mark 5, and I'm going to begin at the 21st verse. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. 
Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes. Y'all, the Bible says she thought. Remember how I talked about earlier those words, those thoughts, those actions? Do they lend themselves to making him famous? Uh, uh, uh. I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from a suffering. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him, and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, at this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Now, we're still talking about blessing the Lord. That lady blessed the Lord like this. She went after him. She spoke up. But she spoke up with her actions. Remember I shared earlier, does your words, your thoughts, your actions resemble that you want to make God famous? Her thoughts and her actions Show Jesus how serious she was about him. She trusted the fact that if I could just get there, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Her thought was that God is big already. She understood that there was no competition. She understood that already. And then because she understood the assignment, as the young people say, then what she was able to do was to go after it. She went after it. But so did Jairus. How did Jairus do that? First, he came on behalf of somebody else. My friends, for whatever reason, the daughter, he, could, he decided not to bring the daughter. How many of us needs to go to Jesus on behalf of somebody else in order to bless the Lord, in order for us to magnify and exalt him? He went on behalf of someone else. Then he went humble. Y'all, Jairus was a king. And I don't know that the people were yet convinced at this point that Jesus was. But he went. And he trusted again. There's that thought process, his, his mind and his heart. He trusted if I can get to this man, he can help my daughter. And then lastly, he had to be patient because Jesus stopped to take care of the lady. Jairus didn't get impatient and say, I've been praying for all this time. I don't went to Jesus this many times. Forget it. I ain't going back. He didn't do God like that. He didn't do Jesus like that. Instead, he waited patiently. And as my spiritual father would say, in my spiritual imagination, I imagine Jairus just waiting and just praying. And I imagine him praying for the lady that's over here, not his own situation that he's dealing with. See, sometimes we get so hyper-focused on us that we forget to be a servant and to pray and to, and to go on behalf and to use our time, talent, and resources for other folks. 
Jairus was a servant while he was waiting for his miracle. Here's my third question. What's your stance toward God? What's your stance? Are you patient? Are you humble? Are you considering others more than yourself? What's your stance? Or is it a selfie world? Or an ussy, me and my four and no more? What's your stance? as we proclaim every single day that we're going to bless the Lord. And remember verse 3 says this, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. See, that lady with the issue of blood, she realized that there was no competition. She was ready with her thoughts and her actions to magnify the Lord. And because she did it publicly and could have gotten in a whole bunch of trouble about it, again, in my spiritual mind, I think she was ready to say, and let us exalt his name together. The same with Jairus. Can you imagine your 12-year-old is asleep and everybody thinks she's dead? And nobody thinks she's sleeping except for Jesus. But he didn't give up. They trusted in him. They knew that if I could get to him, that he'll make a difference. What's your stance? Are you trusting God to make a difference in your life that you might magnify the Lord and exalt his name together? Here's my second little nugget that the Lord taught me through this process. Fear triggers one of two things. It either, fig- it either triggers despair or prayer. Can you imagine that lady with the issue of blood? Y'all, she was scared. She had used all of her resources. Jairus was scared. I can't imagine. But fear triggered prayer. In that time, they didn't have to pray because they could go straight to Jesus. And you can, too, through prayer. And you can, too, through prayer. One of the things that the Lord shared with me about coming here, when I spoke to that devotion piece earlier, was the amount of time that we spend praying. We spent a lot of time talking to other folks. My best friend had a situation the other day. She said, Tamika, I just wanted to call you and talk to you about it. She said, but the Lord said, come to me. She said, so I quickly put that phone down and I started praying. Are we that obedient? He should be our first thought. That's what God is asking us to do. He's asking us to trust him like Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood. That's really blessing. That's really magnifying the Lord with us and us exalting his name together. That patience, that humility. Y'all, that's all I got. But I've got to tell you one more thing. For the next few minutes, we're supposed to pray. And this is the assignment. As I ask those three questions today, y'all, the word is about, for those that love him, it's about being rebuked, corrected, while loved. That's the big difference. Naturally, we're not who we're supposed to be. We have to be taught. That's why it said train up a child in the way they should go. And even us older children, what happens is we get these bad patterns of thought processes, of thinking. Joyce Meyer says, calls it stinking, thinking. And we just have to come to a place where we understand, where it's as simple as 
I understand. And Lord, forgive me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the altar. And if you feel led, deacons, it's okay. You guys don't have to come today, okay? We're going to do something a little different. But I would ask that you begin to pray. If you feel led, just as an act of I'm going to do it different, I want you to make your way to this altar. If you intend to say differently, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. God is calling for us to be different as he does something different in the earth. We have a charge. We have a charge. Lynette, if you and Lisa would make your way up here. This is personal. So between the three of us, we're going to touch every single person. And as we go through, if the Lord leads, we'll pray. But otherwise, we're just going to touch you and agree with you. That's it. So I want you now to begin praying in your hearts. Talking to the Lord about whatever it is that you want to talk to him about. That has come up in the last 35 minutes that we've been together. Lord, I've got to love better. Lord, I've got to give of my talent and my resources. Lord, I've got to cut this club thing out. Lord, I've made too many different things, my Lord. I want you to be Lord of all. I want to magnify you. I want to be able to come together corporately and exalt his name together. God, I want to trust you more. I want to be more humble and patient. God, I'm willing to wait. I trust you. I've done everything else and all that I have left is but to touch the hem of your garment. And I know that I'll be made. Oh.
The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. I don't know what it is that you need from God, but St. James has his attention this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place, and we bless the name of the Lord. Father, I thank you, Father, for revelation. God, I thank you for restoration. I thank you for your love that you so graciously poured out for us today. God, I thank you for the good soil that so many seeds were planted. And God, I thank you just like a a good shepherd that today you gathered your sheep and you reminded us that we're sons and daughters of the Most High. God, I thank you that we can magnify the Lord and that we can exalt his name together. Let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. I don't know about you, but I'm amazed at God. He blesses my socks off time after time after time. 
I have one more assignment, and that is if you are a student or a staff member for schools, I'd like for you to come to the altar. And then if you can, all the others, I want you to get behind so that we can pray. If you are a student of any kind or a staff member of school, school starts tomorrow and we want to send you in right. I don't know about you, but we need Jehovah Nisei to go before us. We need his banner to go before us every single day. Now, if you're not in school, I want you to come and build a fortress. I want you to build a fortress. Come on, Dr. Hinkle. <laughs> I want you to build a fortress. And if you can't come, that's okay. If you'll just lift your hands. One thing about God, he's omnipresent, right? Father God, Lord, I thank you so much for your people that have gathered today. God, as we return to a new school year, Father, I pray for a passion that we didn't know we had to return. Father, whether we're a student that is learning our multiplication facts, learning algebra, or we're an older student that's learning a craft or a trade, Father, if we're staff members, Father, I just pray, Father, for a spirit of patience, a spirit of humility, a spirit of trust, a spirit of faith. God, I pray that we would work and do our work and have a balance. God, I pray for obedience. God, I pray that our purpose would be walked out every single day, regardless of our grade level or our position. God, I pray that we will remind people through our words, our thoughts, or our actions that we belong to you, that we are sons and daughters of the Most High. God, I thank you for the fortress that's been built around. God, I pray those same things for the fortress, for the people that are standing in the gap for us. God, I pray that we are reminded that we're sons and daughters. And God, that we're renewed with a fresh passion. that we don't give up, but instead we give in and surrender to the calling of Christ Jesus. It is in the precious name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. 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 Before we go into announcements, we do want to give you an opportunity for the ones who don't know Christ. The biggest way that you can bless the Lord biggest thing that you can do to give him honor is to give your life to him. I don't know about you, but I, I come from a big family and I understand that my grandmother, she had 15 kids. There's a whole lot of cousins in them. We lived on a dead end. 505 South 19th Street in West Memphis, Arkansas. And one thing we didn't have to worry about is people coming on our end messing with us. Because we were some kin to everybody. And one thing they didn't do is mess with the car thugs. So, uh, with that being said, when you join a family, uh, you have a whole lot of friends. You have a whole lot of people that pray with you and walk with you. 
So that's a, this is an opportunity that you have to give your life to Christ and join the family. Uh, I need a new brother. I need a new sister. And so I would love for you to give your life to Christ today. The biggest gift that you can give to him. Uh, and so the doors of the church is open at, right now. And this is your opportunity for you to give your life to him. Don't wait till tomorrow. Because we do understand that tomorrow is not promised. Some people that thought they were going to wake up today and have another opportunity to get things right. And unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, they did not. So don't put off what you can do today for tomorrow. God is always here with open arms, ready to receive you, walk with you, and talk with you. Come now. Amen. We don't have any, but I want you to understand that the door is always open. And we would love to receive you anytime. Amen. You can call me up in the middle of the night, and we'll talk about it and talk it through. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Dickens. Uh, let's get our announcements, and after announcements, we'll, we'll have the last word from our interim pastor, Pastor Walton. Amen? God bless you. Come study with us at Sunday School every Sunday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. where there is something for all ages. Join us for any of our weekly Bible studies on Wednesdays. We have prayer and Bible study at noon, prayer at 6.30 p.m., and our We Are One learning series at 7 p.m. Please keep giving your $10 per week to our Burn the Mortgage campaign so we can be debt-free in 2023. We should always pray, and we should continue to study and learn how to pray. Join us in the Harriet's Guest Classroom on Saturday, September 3rd, from 9 to 10 a.m. Come with an open mind and expectant heart to receive. Community Rescue Mission is a nonprofit, faith based organization that provides safe shelter, meals, and needed support to help people get back on their feet when life gets tough. St. James has supported the Community Rescue Mission for years, and now we are expanding those ministry efforts to include community care packages. Our goal is to create and deliver special packages for the approximately 10 to 15 residences at CRM each month. Those packages will consist of simple yet meaningful things that are approved by CRM management and possibly requested by some of the residents, such as soft drinks, snacks, nice disposable razors, and good quality toilet paper, which we all can appreciate. Monetary donations will be used to purchase the items for the community care packages. When you give, mark CCP for community care package on your tithing envelope, check, or in the memo section of Givelify. And for those that like a more hands-on approach, we will need volunteers to assemble and deliver the packages each month. This is an ongoing project, so be on the lookout for reminders and updates. See Nikki McGinnister for more details. Members of the Board of Directors will share knowledge gained from their Train the Trainer leadership classes taught by Dr. Philip McClure. All ministry participants, including deacons, deaconess, trustees, ushers, choir members, Sunday school teachers, and any interested members are encouraged to attend the two three-hour sessions that will be held on Saturday, September 24th and Saturday, October 8th from 9 a.m. to noon. Please commit to attending by signing the attendance sheets that are posted on the bulletin boards by the Armor and 50th Street entrances. Let's take the time 
to wish a happy little bit late birthday to Mrs. Rebecca Walton. We pray that God continue to shower you with love, strength, and blessings. Let the church say amen. You know, as Dr. Tate was speaking, my mind kind of went.